Hi all, this is Bryn Smith with Doomsday Robots. I'm excited to do a live stream for you today of uh, the Zoography solo game, including showing you the competitive rules for the um, for the Connections expansion. Basically, how to use the monorails and the monorail objectives. So let me go ahead and jump. Whoops, like exciting to get uh, phone calls during the middle of this live stream, right? So let me get rid of that for a second. Okay. Okay, great. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into Tabletop Simulator. And uh, that is where the game is. If you don't have uh, the workshop yet, download yet, uh, go check out our previous video where we show you how to do it and how to get it. Um, the But the zoography uh, live stream, well, not live stream, excuse me, the zoography file on Tabletop Simulator will now include the Connections expansion components. So, um, and I've got a couple of those listed here, so I'll show you. So we've got the brand new rule book right here for Connections expansion. Uh, we've also got the uh, the the uh, actual monorails themselves, the monorail stations, as well as the monorail tracks uh, for the game. Go put this back in real quick. And finally, we also have uh, the new um, objective cards that are tied to. Oops, sorry. Here they are. The monorail objective cards that are tied to the monorails. So that's all you'll need to be able to play uh, the connections expansion. So what I'm going to do, uh, rather than trying to teach the entire game, you, you guys know the game for the most part already. I'm going to go through and teach how to play the solo game and then do a demo of the solo game as I play. So, okay, let's play the solo game. The first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to flip over our, uh, animal draft cards over to the other side, the solo side, as you see right there, notice it's smaller and there's no reserve. And it's also, it's also brown and orange on the outside. So that'll tell you that you are on the solo side of it. Uh, we also only use the one and two player tiles for the solo game. Those are already in the bag. Um, if you wanted to play multiple players, say you wanted to play the connections expansion with three or four players, um, you would actually add in the, the 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 other tiles to the game. Okay, but we're only playing to, we're only playing the solo game, so we're going to use the one and two. Okay, down here you're going to give me a monorail station, and I'm also going to get three tracks. This is actually everybody would get this. Um, excuse me, two tracks. Everyone would get this set up. To start with, in addition to their starting five um, five visitors, and of course their starting two tiles. In the solo game, you actually play uh, with the number one tile. This one run up right here, the number one tile. Um, you don't use the other tiles in the game, but you have a gate in this that starts your hand. Okay, so I'm going to build in this area, so I'm just going to move these kind of out of the way, so I have a nice open area to build in. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is set up the objectives, and the objectives are somewhat similar. Uh, you can't play a children's game in solo. Solo, you only use this side of it, so we're not using the children's side. Uh, the bottom card, the zoo layout card, you're going to randomize. Uh, you can do E to flip it around, and then F, 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 F to flip it, and then drop it. And it looks like we're going to do a city zoo. All right, city zoo, which means I can't have a tile outside 4x4. A couple of things to note is you lose half a star for each, an each animal under 10, just like the regular game. But if you're playing solo game, you have to have at least 12 animals. Also, you can lose half a star for unplayed pieces. That includes now my unplayed monorail. So I've got three here, but if I have one I don't play, I'll ultimately lose another point there for that. Okay, great. Uh, let's pull up the other. There are other monorails in the bag. They can be used uh, if you need extra ones to be able to meet the goal. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to shuffle the monorail objectives and go ahead and play one of those right here. So this monorail objective is going to add on to our typical objectives that we usually do. So let me go ahead and get this for you. Okay, so these I'm going to shuffle, and I'm going to set these up the way I normally set them up, uh, with a three star first, then with a uh, a two star next to it, and then with another two star on the silver side right next to that. This form this forming now. If you look, ten stars. If we were setting up the original the original game, not the monorail game, we wouldn't use this, and we would have added another uh, two star tile to it to form our ten stars. Uh, but because we are playing with the monorails, I actually put that up here. Um, it actually takes up a spot right here, and you see it forms a nice artwork. So if we wanted to name what game we're playing, and this is important for Solo, we're playing Autumndale Reach with a passenger train, and they want a city zoo. So if you ever want to uh, test yourself out in the Solo game and you want to duplicate the exact same layout, you just have to memorize or write down the name of it, and it will give it, and you'll and you'll have the exact same layout for the Solo game. Great. So the should mention the connection expansion the monorails adds uh, a significant layer of difficulty to the game um, it's not necessarily harder to play the game it's just more challenging to win so that's why i'm showing it on the solo game because um to win the solo game um the rules say the only way to win is to get a 10 it says in there um those rules were written 
uh, before we added the Connections expansion. So Connections expansion added for extra for solo game, we consider a win an eight and a 10 star zoo is a perfect zoo, okay? So a win is an eight, 10 star is perfect, and we're trying to meet these objectives. So I'm gonna show you one more thing before I do any more setup. You can actually zoom in really close on this and go to picture, right click and go to picture in picture. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a nice little, whoops, I'm gonna create a picture in picture of this area here um, to make sure that I can at any time reference uh, what I need to do for the solo game. So actually I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger here and then uh, shrink it up, just to push, push it up to the corner. There we go. So now I can look at the solo game stuff at any time. In fact, I wonder if I can get even closer. Experimenting with this, this has been a really cool tool to use, but uh, I'm losing it live on the stream. I know there's a way to make it bigger. Here we go. Just like that. That's what I want right there, something like that, so I can see exactly what the goals are the entire game while we're playing. Great, and I can zoom out here. Oops, actually, you have to lock Lock the picture in picture in place through this lock button. It's back up here. And now I've got my goals for the game. So now that's gonna be kind of visible to me no matter where I'm at on the board. So wherever I'm building, I can always look right here and I've got it. And any player can do this and it will actually save it to the orientation that you put it. But okay, so let's talk about how the game is set up first of all. So in a solo game, it's different than the original game. The first thing you do is we're gonna shuffle the tile deck by right clicking and shuffle. And we're gonna draw out, we're gonna put out three. So we're not putting out six here, we're gonna put out three. Now these three, we go ahead and put the corresponding animals on the spaces. There's number one, number two, and let's go ahead and add the tortoise for number three. It was one of the seclusion animals. So this is all still part of setup. Now I'm gonna look at these three tiles. This is still part of setup. I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna play over here. One of these three tiles will become the starting tile of my zoo. The other two will be discarded in the game. Um, they won't go to my hand, for instance, it'll be the actual starting tile of my zoo. So let's look at our objectives. I need four large animals, four unique attractions, two um, encircled habitats, less than two animals in my gate, and finally, here's the monorail. To get the two stars needed for the monorail, I need a monorail connecting three visitors, and I need a station specifically on a, on a seating area. Okay, because of the focus on large animals, I'm gonna need lots and lots of space. Okay, so as much as I hate to get rid of these two excellent tiles, they're really good for putting down things. In fact, this one right here, this restaurant with the seating is exceptionally good. But I think I can get off to the races if I can start with this tile here. So I'm going to play these, and all the discarded tiles I'm just going to set up here, and they're out of the game. We're not playing with those anymore. So setup's now done. I have my starting tile. I have my starting hand. I have my starting uh, uh, resources that I have to play. And I have the starting uh, the starting animals in the in the queue. So now we actually now we're going to play the game. So at the start of the round, the first thing we do at the start of a round is we're going to deal out six tiles, just like the original game, right? And go ahead and put the animals out on the tiles. So we start with a with a with a with with a, with a rhino. Uh, we got another one there. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go and lay them on the tiles. This is what we do when we're demoing in person. So to make sure this is all working. Okay, great. And then I'm going to put them in order. So this is going to go on number four, five. Ooh, six looks like a mean tile. Six. Uh, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. Once I've done them all, uh, just like this, this this would look identical to the original game, except there's no there's no um, there's no reserve. I'm only going to reveal two at a time. So I take the left two tiles and I flip them. So on your turn, which is right now for me, um, I'm going to draft one of these two tiles, and the other one is going to be removed from the game entirely. It will not come. It will not be in the game. So I'm always choosing between two. Okay, so um, looking at the two that are here, this is a great tile for playing large animals, um, but I've got a good tile with a lot of good stuff on it. Um, getting a gift shop, it can be very challenging, um, and it's really good to play it early since it triggers off of both um, the uh, gate and the monorail. So I'm gonna go in and, and get rid of this one over here, throw that out, and this is gonna go into my hand as usual. So you can see my hand down here. So now I get two actions. Just like in the original game, I get two actions. The two actions are I can build a tile, or I can take animals. Now let me explain some of the rules as far as taking animals. Oh, what, um, as far as taking animals go. When I take, if any animals I don't take at the end of the round, um, uh, I will lose those animals from, um, I will lose those animals basically from the game. So for instance, um, uh, how do I decide which, which, which ones I lose? Whichever tile has the most animals that's full, I will lose all those animals. Because this has two secluded animals on it, 
I'm probably going to lose them both. I doubt I can make all these animals come in before the end of this round. Because one other thing I can do I forgot to mention involving building. Not only can I build a tile, not only can I take animals, but I can build a monorail piece. Now, I'm not going to build it yet, um, but when it gets to the game where I'm going to start showing how it's built, then I will, I will, I will, I will put them down and show you how the monorails specifically work. But um, so let me start with this. This is my starting tile. Um, I can still twist it around because I can change how my zoo's oriented, which is fine at this point. Um, if I were to put this, this is not going to fit on that space at all. So I'm going to take one action to build, uh, to build that, and the second action to build this. That's going to give me a nice. A nice start. It'll give me an auto, It'll give me a visitor here, which is great. And that's two builds, and could help me set up for doing a double rhinoceros play. So let's go ahead and put a visitor here. Why do I get a visitor there? Because the gift shop is adjacent to the gate. Um, I mentioned about the gift shop being adjacent to the station. Um, we'll see if that comes in later in the game, but I'll explain that when I start building monorails. So that's two actions. It's built. I still have this. All right. So since I've done my two actions, I move on to the next round, and that is reveal the next two. Only one of these two tiles is going to come into the game for me. So I do need four different um, different attractions. So it might be worthwhile to pick this up. But gosh, this is just such a good tile to get four large animals. Um, and it fits perfectly right here. Uh, it's tough to pass that up. So I will pass up yet another restaurant. Now, now there's only three restaurants in the game, in a two-player game, or in, the, in this deck. So... Um, for one to two players. So I know that if I want to get four uniques, I'm going to have to pick up a, pick up that last restaurant. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this, move it to my hand. And so now I'm going to make a play. Uh, let's try this. I'm going to go ahead and play, put this here because I know that's where I want it to go for the first action. For my second action, I'm going to grab both of these rhinos to put in here. So we're well on our way. And why can I do that? Because again, uh, they just need a space and they need two waters each. So that's going to be a great start for getting the rhinos in the game. Okay, and that was two actions. So here we go back to back to this. I'm gonna flip these two. Ah, oh, there's a rhino photo op. I've already missed out on the elephant photo op. And there's only one other one, that's the giraffe. So I'm kind of excited about the giraffe. Um, I'm not gonna keep this because I can't get the visitor on anyway. And I do need an exhibit and there's not many exhibits better than this one. So I'm gonna put it over here. Why am I gonna put it over here? Because I need to ultimately connect three Visitors by monorail, so it'd be good to have these visitors somewhat near each other. So that's my first action. That's going to actually earn me a visitor, yay. And that's two of my four that I need. And for my second action, I think I can pull this off. I'm going to go ahead and pull this giraffe and put it there and put the two zebras right here. So I'm off to a great start here. Uh, very lucky with the way the with the way the animals came out that they were so easy to put place. And uh, and that's that's my second action. I'm done. So uh, now we now we go to this. Now look at this. There's no tiles left. We're gonna go to the second full phase of the game where we put out six more. Before we do that, we look and see are there any tile are there any are there any animal draft cards that are full? Yes, this one is full. So um, we lose all animals. They all leave the game. They can never come back in the game. There's no reserve. Those are now gone. And so now uh, and we're left actually with none because I took the rest. If if there had been animals here. Uh, for instance, and here um, on these spaces, I would only have removed the one with the most. Okay, so let's go ahead and put out now the new, the next six and their corresponding animals. Okay, so we've got one, uh, two, three, four, uh, five, and six. Great, so let's go ahead and put these up here. Number one, uh, two, three, four, five, and six. And you can always skip the step of putting them onto the draft cards, but that's kind of what I do. So so now um, we're in the second phase of the game. Same idea. I'm going to flip these two over with the F key, and I have to pick one. Now, here's the deal. I know <laughs> there's not too many of, of these. There's only, there's only one in the entire game, and I want to get four uniques, so this could go a long way towards that. This is a better tile for playing animals but I've already got three of my four larges. I'm pretty confident I can probably get that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, this botanical gardens feature and get rid of this. So now I've got two builds to do. Well, um, I really need to make sure that I am considering the fact that I need to have, oh boy, I think I already messed this up. Okay, I won't get a full perfect start. This is what I get for, for playing live. Uh, it's hard to think about what I'm doing as far as teaching and and to play the extremely thinky uh, solo game. But note, in order to get this star here, 
I need to have no more than two animals in a gate habitat. Well, there's my gate habitat right there. And as you see, I've got four animals in there. So I've already not going to get a 10 star zoo. Okay, but let's see if I can still pull off my age. So I won't get a perfect zoo. Let's see if I can pull off my age. And, and let's say I was shooting for perfection, right? I, I was used to getting eight star zoos and used to, used to win. This would be the point when I would reset, keep my objectives the same, just shuffle my tiles and start over again and see how I did. But I'm going to see if I can at least get an eight star zoo. I'm going to put this right here. Um, I'm going to put it here next to these because I really want to get a monorail that's going between these guys. So uh, what's also great about that is it's automatic visitor, which is great. And it gives me a very small spot here for a secluded animal once one comes out so I can get my um, get my, uh, my my 12 animals I need uh, in the game. So it's a great spot to put one in case I get stuck. Okay, so there's one action. I think it's time to start building the monorail. So here's how the monorail works. When you place a monorail, t monorail piece, um, you actually place it between two tiles, okay, between two tiles. Once you've placed it between, um, your next monorail piece has to come off an, on, off one of the ends of the tile. So I can either play it here, or I could have played it here, or possibly here. And this is Tabletop Simulator, so even though uh, you can see underneath the tile, right, see underneath the, um, the monorail, uh, Tabletop Simulator doesn't treat that as being empty space. It thinks there's something there, so if I put it there, it doesn't realize it can go on top of that visitor. So just be aware when you're playing, that's a tabletop simulator glitch, um, or it's not a glitch, but well, it's a tabletop simulator thing. The real, the real, t t uh, the real monorails are actually very tall and, and actually fit over uh, nearly all the animals, except I think the giraffe is the only one that doesn't, but it's relatively skinny, so you can, you can, put, it you can put it beside it. But okay, but for the sake of what we're doing, we're putting monorails here. So why would I put them here? Um, one, it's an action. What, what I can only put one down, by the way. I was just demonstrating how it works. But I need for my monorail, if you look at my goal here, to connect three visitors. Now, something's called connected whenever, it's, it, whenever a monorail piece touches a tile that contains it. So um, right now, this monorail is not only connected to these three attractions, it's connected to these three visitors. It's also connected to this habitat here, this habitat here, and this habitat here because the, because the monorail touches some part of a tile that touches those habitats. So, uh, so, okay. so we're gonna start with that. I'm gonna go ahead and move this off. I can only play one monorail for one action. So my two actions were to build this and to build that monorail. So I'm done with my action for the round. It's time to go to the next set of tiles. All right, so I'm gonna need, in order to do this game, I'm gonna need to have um, my uh, station specifically the station on a seating area. And two great seating areas just came up, so I gotta think about this. So let me talk about the station real quick. Um, if I were to play the station, okay, let's say I were to place it right here, okay, the station. The first rule for the station is, the station is the end of the line, the spot with the station on it. Now, y'all's actual pieces will have a sticker that you lay on top of it that shows that the station is an amenity. Uh, we didn't upload that on these, so it's just, just look at the big part, that's the monorail station. The monorail station is very special. One, it counts as an amenity for any kind of goal that needs an amenity, okay? Um, and if you remember, amenities are anything in the blue, in the, in the, blue, uh, the blue rectangle. The second thing it does is it actually triggers the visitor um, condition for gift shops. If the gift shop is on or adjacent to a station in one of these spaces here, it'll actually earn a visitor. So it's a great way to be able to get a visitor on a gift shop that's not near a gate, that's maybe way out here or something, okay? But the big downfall, the big trouble with the station is, like I said, it's the end of the line. If I wanna add more monorails to this, I can't end it, I can't build onto the station piece. I have to build onto the other piece. So once you place the station, you are locking in basically the very end limit of your line. And, and to meet the monorail goals, it has to be on a on a seating area. So as much as I want to connect these three, I don't know where I'm going to end up putting my seating area yet. So I am a little nervous about about committing that. But let me look at these seating areas and see what I've got. Now we've also got to get some other goals. We've got to get two encircled habitats. So I already have an idea that I want to put the giraffe um, photo up right there, which I know is coming up eventually, uh, in order to meet in order to match uh, this shape and, and fill this out. So that's probably not gonna be a problem for me. Uh, I could put the seating area down here. Whoops. And by doing that, I, I should actually move my whole zoo. So if you ever need to move your whole zoo, uh, you can click drag, pick it up. And then as long as you move it to the next set of lines, it should drop just fine, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, this one tile, which means this tile will discard. And now I've gotta decide what, what I'm gonna build and where. Uh, I really, 
really want that draft photo up right there, but I but I want to get the other draft inside, and it's not really going to be possible. And here at the end of the round, I'll lose access to this draft if I don't play it soon. So that is a really tough decision right now. Um, however, if I play this here, um, not only will it let me play the draft, which is great, I guess technically, see this is part of the struggle of the game. I really want that photo op because I want the four different. Uh, but I could put it here, it's a little more flexible. But I also need a seating area somewhere over here to be able to meet my goal. In fact, actually a seating area here would not be bad because then I can build my monorail to meet it and meet all my conditions. So I'm going to go ahead and at least at least at least take that seating area. I'm going to play this one right here because I know that's at least connecting me and my three visitors. Now I've just got to get my station on to a to a seating area, and now I've got to decide what I'm going to do with this other piece. Um, I haven't decided where I want to put this one yet. Let's try this here for a build and see if maybe something will happen with these next two tiles. So, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and reveal these two. And here's what we got. We got a restaurant and a seating area. Well, I don't know that I need another seating area that's the same. Um, it does give me some options, but, um, but yeah, this could be challenging. I do need the restaurant though. I know where I want the restaurant. It could definitely go right here. Um, let me go ahead and do that. I'll take this restaurant. I'll lose this. If I put the restaurant right here, what's nice about that, that's one action, is I can go ahead and place an elephant, so there's two water, and place this gazelle right here. Now I've covered my four large animal need. I've even got my four different attractions, and I'm really close to having two, uh, two encircled habitats. Habitats completely surrounded by walkways. So okay, uh, that's the end of that round. So here we're in the final phase of the game. I'm going to go ahead and lose these two because it's a full card. And those are gone. These stay because the card wasn't full and it was and didn't have the most. So let's put out the next six and see what comes out. All right. So first of all, I'm going to add this lion to the game. I'm going to add uh, the gazelle comes out. Uh, whoops. Sorry. Gazelle comes out. Uh, the next rhinoceros is on four. We got a uh, giraffe on five. This goes on seven, and then finally this one on eight. Okay, so this is our this is it. By the way, the bag's empty. Like these are the last tiles of the game. I have to figure this out and make this work right now. So let's go ahead and flip these over. And thank goodness there's my photo op, which can go there. I, I definitely want it there. Um, that could make it challenging to do the seating if I put it down there now, but I do want to kind of get it. So I'll at least take that into my hand. I don't know if I'm going to play it yet. We'll see what I do. Um, I have an option. Oh, that lion's there. I, oh, getting these three animals would be great. Right now I've got uh, one animal here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got eight animals right now, eight of them. Um, I need to get to 12. So I've got to pick up somehow four more animals up here, which is, whew, that's going to be really difficult. There's three. This is going to be really, really hard. Okay, so um, if I can get these three and these three in, that'd be fantastic. I don't know how I'm going to manage that, but uh, <laughs> I guess we'll see. But I've got to take some actions right now. So if I put this here, uh, that'll remove the ability to do this. Okay, I'll put that there. I'm pretty sure it's going to go there. Um, and I've got to get an, a space for some more animals. So let's go ahead and put this one right here and see what I can make happen. So there's two actions. I played two tiles. Um, hoping to goodness that this works out. I can at least by playing this tile here, um, finish my second monitor objective. So here we go. Here's the next ones. Here we go. All right. This is exactly the seating area I needed. Unfortunately, this is too. If I want to get a visitor onto this, I need to have that seating area there. And I also need a seating area there. It's unlikely I'll get both. Um, this one though helps me accomplish uh, helps me get this habitat. For, actually, they both do. Which one's going to give me more space? This one's technically more space. Um, challenging stuff here. Um, I don't have, this won't actually give me any more space in this habitat, whereas this one will. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and play this one then. And that one's going to go away. That was one action. My second action is here to play that. So I've actually met my, my goal here. All right, but I only have two actions left. 
and uh, this is going to be particularly challenging. I'm not going to go get all my animals um, unless I forego a tile. I'll take this tile because I kind of know. Do I really want to take the tile? Let's take a look for a second. Um, let me go ahead and add the visitor here. I do need one more visitor, which I'm only going to be able to earn if I take this, and it is an animal. Let's go ahead and get this one. Play this animal. Play that. That gets, takes care of my visitors. And then for my last trick, I'll go ahead and take these three animals. And maybe that'll be the four I need. We'll see. Because um, <clears throat> this is three here. All right, so I can go ahead and add, uh, let's put this here. I don't like having empty habitats. Let's go ahead and spread things out, and that can live there. And that would be my second action. So um, so that's it. Let's see if let's see how I did on score now. So we're going to look first. Did I get four large animals? One, two, three, four. Yes, just barely squeaked by on that. Did I get uh, four different attractions? Actually, I got I get all five. So I got all of them. I got all of them here, including an extra one here, which is great. I have two encircled habitats here and here, which works out really well. I've got oh, I have more than two uh, animals in my in my gate habitat, so I won't get that star. So right now I'm at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm at seven stars. Does my monorail connect three visitors? It sure does. There's one, two, and three. Great. So that's another star. And you'll notice that this star here on the last monorail space, I forgot to mention, is a conditional star. You can only earn this star if you've earned the star before it. So um, so I can't just like just throw my station on top of the seating area and say, look, I got a star. I have to meet the other condition too. But fortunately, I did meet the first condition, and now I've got my seating area. Uh, my monorail station on top of a seating area, so I met that one as well. So I got all the stars up here but one. Now let's see how many stars I lose. So it's half a star for each. So let's count my animals, every animal under 12. Well, I've got one, two, and count those first because those exhibits give me automatic animals. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I have eleven. <clears throat> four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No, it's twelve, sorry. One, I missed this green animal. Uh, it's it's harder in, it's harder when you're not in person. They're a little easier to see when you're in person. But there, there's 12 animals. So I did all 12. Unplayed pieces. Well, I have no tiles left in my hand. And no visitors left to play. And I have no monorail pieces. So I didn't lose anything for unplayed pieces. And my zoo fits perfectly within a 4x4, four four, which is what was expected for the city tile. And I got a total of a 9-star zoo. Now, I'm going to call that a win, all right? That was pretty good. I kind of forgot about the... Uh, the initial condition, which as you can see, makes that uh, quite challenging to do. But uh, nine star zoo, I'll call that a win for me. Not a perfect zoo. If I wanted to do it again, I would just I, I could reload the reload the mod and try it again. So uh, let me tell you a little about something I'm planning to do with a solo game. Uh, based on the number of combinations of of what all can come out here, as well as um, what can come out for this goal, there's like 360 ish. Combos, I measured this at one point. It's, I know it's over 300. Um, I am considering doing a, a daily solo challenge. And it will tell you exactly the name of the city, uh, exactly the name of the city, exactly the, the goal to do, and exactly the um, the type of zoo to build. And uh, and yeah, do a daily solo challenge. Uh, Play your solo game. Take a picture of your final zoo. Post it online. Um, we'll, we'll, get a, we'll, get a, we'll get a Twitter feed for this. And it'd be a lot of fun to be able to see um, to be able to see people's zoos built. Now, obviously, we're doing this all currently with um, in Tabletop Simulator, but we're, we're looking forward to this when everyone receives their game to be able to do our, 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 our daily solo challenge. Um, it really is a lot of fun. I love this solo game. It is very, very hard, as you see. And, and I know I played this game hundreds and hundreds of times, obviously. So I've got a pretty good beat on like what's all in the deck and how it works. But so um, I would encourage you that if you play the solo game and you score and you score a four star zoo or a five star zoo, don't be just don't just be discouraged. Keep playing. You will get better at it. You will learn the ins and outs. It's quite nuanced and ultimately be able to help yourself uh, to ultimately earn that that it, that very elusive 10 star victory. And as you see, I didn't prep this at all. I just randomly came out with these. So um, it could have been any number of other combinations uh, and it would have created a completely different zoo um i'll also admit that at the beginning i was pretty lucky that i had two red animals two rhinos on the same tile and you never know what's going to happen with how you do it you do your best with the tiles that come out including which tiles come out in a given point I, i've definitely had many games where i needed a specific tile or two specific tiles and they came out on the same flip and i only got one of the ones i needed and had to kind of like put together a plan to to come up with a way to finish the game so okay so this is a uh, zoography solo game with the connections expansion the connections expansion in the competitive game adds an additional challenging objective as well as a new action type 
to place the monorails. Again, you're seeing the monorails, um, they need to be placed uh, contiguously with each other. Um, you can have up to four. I noticed I only used three, but if I wanted to use a fourth one, I could pull out another track for the fourth piece, and it could have gone somewhere on one of these two edges here if I needed it to, to meet the goal, right? Um, as you see, I didn't really have enough, even have actions to do that. If I Even if I wanted to play the other piece, I didn't have the actions for it. But um, Oh, and these are unlimited bags, by the way. So if you click one and delete it, there, there's like an unlimited number of unlimited number of pieces in there. But in the real game, there's 12 of these tracks and four stations, one station for each player, and and four. And there's basically three tracks per player to be able to use. But uh, okay, well that said, that is all of my um, and this is everything for the solo game and for the Connections Expansion Competitive. Uh, the next time I do a live stream, it will be to show off the cooperative game. Uh, not all the components are uploaded for the cooperative game. There's a whole set of cards that go with it. They're the, the character rule cards that will have to get uploaded. But the rule book is here if you want to read not only the rules, the more specifics for um, the Connections Expansion uh, competitive game, but also all the rules are in here for the uh, Connections Expansion cooperative game, which does play up to five players. So if I set it up, I'm probably going to need to create a, a bigger table Definitely change the setup a little bit since you're all playing in the competitive and cooperative game. You're, you're building one giant national zoo in the middle of the table. So I'll definitely have to do a little bit different setup on the mod. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, this has been uh, Bryn Smith with Doomsday Robots showing off uh, zoography. And as usual, I can't wait until you have this in your hands. It's a beautiful game. You're going to love it. All right. Have a